Okay, now we're going to talk about audio. Specifically, playing back sound files and recording into Mac. So, first thing we're going to do is add in our audio input and our audio output. Alright, now I want to show you these are the fancy Max objects, icons, you know, but they also exist as old school objects. Okay, these are identical. This is your analog or digital converter or ADC. This is your digital analog converter or DAC. Notice the tilde, that means we're dealing with audio. So if we do this, and let me turn our volume down. You should start to hear me through the microphone. I don't know if you can hear that in the video, but I could easily start to feed back, so I'm not going to do that anymore. Delete these. All right. So get rid of those. These are just prettier to look at. All right, first thing we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to record our voice or whatever's going to go through our microphone. In this case, we're going to record my voice. And the object to do that is record. Then we need to give it a buffer name. All right, so before we do that, we have to talk about what a buffer is. So there's another object called buffer, and we're going to give this the name West Side Electronic Music, W-E-M. Alright, so there are two ways of playing audio in any um, software. You can either play it from the RAM, which is basically called from memory or from a buffer. Or you can play it from disk, which is on your hard drive, like this recording here. Right, so if I hit spacebar, this should play back. Continuous sauce in your live stream. Okay, that's from disk. I can also, I could load that into my buffer, and then I would hear it coming from the software as opposed to from disk. Now, those are two different paradigms. One saves on, on RAM. The other saves on speed. So if you want to do things very quickly, like samples that you want to trigger very quickly, use buffer. If you want to play long, long samples that take up a lot of disk space, play from disk. And I'll show you how to do both. So we're going to record into a buffer. Notice how this argument, WEM, Westside Electronic Music, is the same as this argument here. So it's going to record into this buffer. Okay, let's just get a little help and record. You can already see that it's m this little fancy object here is monitoring my input. All it really needs to do is you start the recording by using the toggle. And then there's some other fancier things that you can do. Then it will record into your buffer. Now, one thing you do need to do is give your buffer a length. So we're going to give ourselves a length of five seconds. And I'm only coming in channel one. And I need my toggle, which is T. All right. And this is a sync. If you wanted to use multiples, you could sync it with something else. But for now, we don't need that. All right. Let's see if anything happens. I'm going to turn it on. Is something happening? We shall find out soon. Stop. All right, now when I double click on buffer, should show me, there it is. It looks like a waveform, which is good. That means we did something. We saved something into memory. All right. <coughs> so let's see if we want to hear that now. Notice how this doesn't let you play it. It lets you look at it, but not play it. Let's try to play it. Guess what that's called? Play. And we're going to play from the Westside Electronic Music Buffer. 
that's going to go down here. And we're going to get some help on that just to see what it can do. So sh control click. Notice how we can either use start and stop messages or we can use a toggle. There's ways of starting halfway through or different points through. You can pause, you can resume. Um, there's other more advanced things you can do, but for the most part, it's reading from the buffer directly. So we know the buffer we're going to read from. There's our toggle. And control E. That sounds familiar. All right. So notice every time I click the X, it starts at the beginning. Okay, if I wanted to start at different places, I would need to go back to the help and look at how to start at different spots by using messages. All right, that's for your own time to play around with. Okay, so we've recorded into a buffer. All right, here's our buffer. We can also delete that and record something new. But if this is how you're using Max, you're not utilizing it to the best of your abilities. Okay, the whole point of Max is to not do this because you can do this in logic. The whole point is to be able to do it in a way that is more, um, well, something that's that a DAW cannot do. Okay, so let's just try something first here. What we're going to do is we're going to take this output and I'm going to show you some of the options that you can do after you record. So if we go to objects and we're going to go to what's called MSP, there's a little drop down here. MSP is the old um, kind of second side of Max. Max used to be called Max MSP. MSP is the creator's initials. Um, so you can see there's all these different options. The MSP is really all the audio, the cool audio stuff that you can do in Max. We're going to go to filters and we're going to grab a comb filter. And there it is. This is called comb. We're going to get help on it. Comb filter is really cool. It's a feed feedback filter. It creates interesting effects. Um, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to copy all of this. And I'm going to use it in here. this out of the way. Okay, so <coughs> we, don't, we don't have a stereo buffer, so we just have one output. Let's give these a little bit of English. There we go. <laughs> All right. So now we just need to attach this to our output. And let's see what we get. Let's try it again. Two. Okay. All right. So let's say now we want to connect this to one of our MIDI controllers. Remember that? So one thing that we want to do is we're going to route 
I think our first one was 33. So what we need to do is pack. Shouldn't need the decimals after. Let's see if this works. So we're going to pack the number with the value. And we should hopefully get something coming out of here of our first. OK, so that's our first slider on our keyboard. My second one doesn't do anything. It only works for my first one because I told it to just route number 33 <laughs> as opposed to all the others, which have, if you remember, have unique names. So now when I play this back, I should be able to do it more dynamically. Um, Okay, so one thing you could do is um, play back a buffer, right? Have some sort of controller, and then, even more crazy, is you could record it into another buffer by creating a new buffer, right? is getting crazy. Let's call this lem2. Uh, that's not what we need. So, oh yeah, we don't need that. So we can use this. And we're going to double. This is going to get a little crazy, but I'm going to take this toggle and use it for both. So when I play my first buffer, I'm going to record what's coming out of it into my second buffer while manipulating my um, delay time for my uh, comb filter. Let's just see. All right. So did something go in there? Look at that. There's our second buffer. There's our original buffer. Okay. And if we wanted to, we could play that back. What did we get? Uh, okay. So if you wanted to, you could create a whole bunch of buffers and do a cascading um, delay system. Um, you could make your own little sampler, playback sampler. Let me get rid of all this now. You could connect all of these to different faders. All right, that's recording into a buffer and playing back from a buffer. These are the basic ways of doing it. I'm going to get rid of these now. Don't need that, don't need that. Um, one really quick way, if you wanted to play something from internally, but not um, that's like built in. You could do just <coughs> drag it in, it creates a little playlist, and uh, comes with a play button. You can also use a toggle. So it acts just like play, but it's specified to the drum loop. Okay, now I don't know, let's just try this. If I drag a file in to Max, no, it doesn't do anything. Okay, I thought maybe it would do this, but it does not. So we've learned something. All right, so now we have this file on disk that we want to play. How do we play it? We're going to use an object called SF, sound file play, classic object. Let me get help on that. And <coughs> you can you have to give it an open message, and that can, on its own, it will open up a dialog to your desktop or to wherever, to the f to the finder, and you can select the the um, audio file there, and then you just use a toggle. Oops. Okay, that's one way to do it. 
Um, you can also do open and then you can put in the direct path um, f to the file. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. That way you don't have to go through the, um, the finder dialog every time. So I believe we can do it this way. And we will know if we get an error if it doesn't find it um, by just opening up our Mac console. Now we see why this is important. All right, so if it gives an error, it means that it, this doesn't work. All right. Continue with soft and relaxing. There it is. Okay, so if I wanted to, right, I can have a bunch of these and open desktop voice one, voice two, etc., and, and a bunch of different FF plays. And I could have a little s from disk sampler, or I could use buffers. And in the buffer, oops. you'll see that there is a uh, option for reading in a sample, right? So I could read this into a buffer as well. And I can just take the same message and I'm gonna change open to read. Let's see if that works. And there it is, right? And then I could you could do this like as you load the patch, read in all your samples from your folder or whatever into individual buffers, and then you could have a, a built-in RAM or buffered sampler. All right. So now we could put it all together, and we can also process this from disk just like we did with play, it's no different. Continue with soft and relaxing. Continue with soft, continue with soft and relax. Continue with soft and relax. Continue with soft and relaxing. Okay, so there's some basic file, uh, audio file manipulation.